and then it was real. In a few short moments after the words, one more thing, appeared on a massive screen during the September 12th Apple keynote, the iPhone X went from a much-rumored tech myth to a real, officially announced product. Soon Apple's SVP of marketing Phil Schiller was back out to tell us all the new features, from the Edgito Edge Super Retina display to wireless charging to the oh man it's as much as a MacBook Air $999 starting price. See also Apple finally unveils the iPhone 8 in all its glory but he didn't tell us everything. The iPhone X has a bunch of interesting details that Schiller or anyone didn't say one word about during the keynote, especially some notable fine print on the official spec sheet. There are many notable changes from previous iPhones, and some things that were surprisingly left the same. There are also a couple of important things we still don't know, but now have more clues about. One. The 256GB model costs $1,149 image Apple it's bad enough that the iPhone X best price is $999, but that's only for 64GB of storage. Apple mentioned a 256GB version, but didn't give the price on stage. When you select that model on the official pre-order page the site gives you the bad news the 256GB iPhone X will set you back $1,149, and that's not even including Apple Care, which costs $199. Oh my, too. It supports fast charging image Apple Apple technically did reveal this during the keynote, but it was on a slide that listed several different features all at once, and it didn't even get a mention from one of the execs. But the iPhone X and the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus will be the first iPhones to support fast charging, a feature that's practically standard on many Android competitors. Now, if you use your Apple charging plug and cable, you'll be able to get a 50% charge in 30 minutes. 3. Galileo Support Image Image Broker X Shutterstock The iPhone has had built-in support for the U.S. military-created GPS network for a long time, and it added support for GLONASS, Russia's version of a satellite positional system, back in 2011. The iPhone X, along with the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, are the first iPhones to support Galileo, Europe's new satellite system, which came fully online in late 2016. Apple's also introducing support for QZSS for better positioning in for Asia Pacific regions. It's going to be harder than ever to get lost with your iPhone 4. The screen ISNT as bright as the Galaxy Note 8s image Lily Sam smashable per the spec sheet. The iPhone X screen maxes out at 625 nits, which is pretty freaking bright. 300 nits is considered very good for most screens. But it's nowhere near as bright as the display on the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. A recent test by DisplayMate found the Note 8 had a maximum brightness of 1,240 nits, which, in the words of DisplayMate analyst Raymond Sonaria, was the brightest smartphone display that we have ever measured. Maybe next year, Apple 5. The selfie camera HASNT improved image RAM and Wong Mashable for as much as Apple talked up the iPhone XS True Depth camera system and its ability to recognize faces for unlocking your phone securely and letting you animate your face with poop emojis. The actually specs are exactly the same as the iPhone 7S. It appears Apple is using the same actual camera as that models while complementing it with better sensors and improved image processing. Still, it would be nice to have more than 7 megapixels, 6. It supports HEIF and HEVC format. This is no surprise since Apple announced the format in June at its Worldwide Developers Conference WWDC, but the new iPhones both support the new HEIF High Efficiency Image Format and HEVC High Efficiency Video Compression Formats. These new ways of storing photos and videos use better compression so you get more out of your memory. With the new formats and a little like, that 64GB iPhone X might not fill up as fast as you think we hope. 7. Notification Center is where it always was with no home button on the iPhone X, you navigate it somewhat differently than other iPhones, and a swipe up takes you back home. The only problem that's how you usually call up Control Center. Well, that moves up to a swipe down on the top right. Another problem the top is where Notification Center is supposed to be. Well, it's still there. Swiping down from anywhere on the left or middle will call up the notification center, as before. Problem more or less solved.
8. There are two different iPhone XS image Apple and I'm not talking about storage. Apple is making the iPhone X with only two different flavors of modems, two different SKUs, in industry parlance. Different countries use different frequency bands for wireless connections, and it's tough for a single model to be compatible with them all, so the two iPhones are meant for different regions. For the iPhone 8, however, there are four different models. What's going on it's impossible to know until we see the first teardowns of the iPhone X, but here's my suspicion. Apple is currently trying to diversify its modem suppliers, using Qualcomm modems in some of its iPhone 7s and Intel modems in others. This is probably also the case for the iPhone 8 but, most likely, only one of those suppliers gets to be in the iPhone X my guess Qualcomm. This could have a nice upside for consumers. Partly because of a messy legal war between Apple and Qualcomm, Apple throttles the performance of its Qualcomm modems so they have parity with the slower Intel modems, and all iPhone 7 owners get the same performance. But if the iPhone X has only Qualcomm modems, that could mean no throttling and faster modem performance for Apple's top of the line iPhone. Again, all that's a guess but it seems to fit the facts. We won't really know the answer to the modem question, and whether or not all these changes are actually any good, until the iPhone X gets into to the hands of reviewers and teardown engineers. We can't wait.